Hey y'all, it's Bo Brotherton with Better Together Life. We're going over all of the homestead tools and gear that I bought our second year of homesteading. And you guys, this is whenever the world was ending, so we bought a lot. So 2020 was the year for us of being able to raise our own meat, our own protein for our family. And it all started for getting the infrastructure ready for these chicken tractors. So the first thing on our list is this book by John Suskovich. It is his stress-free chicken tractor plans. It's just a build guide, but it is so good. He's got photos in it. He's got everything, even how to like make a chicken feeder in here. It is so well done. It is so laid out. We love these chicken tractors. They're lightweight. They have a really high top. So for us here in Texas, birds don't get super hot. We've even used it for some of our piglets. Like if we had to separate them at a time, we love this chicken tractor. There were key things for this chicken tractor that we knew that we wanted. Whenever we first built them, we just dragged them across the dirt, across the grass. It wasn't something that we really thought through. There was some ideas in the plans to be able to drill some holes and put some wheels on there and bolts. I just didn't do that. But moving them every day, it was really hard. This tool, I think, is the best investment you can ever make for your homestead for growing your own food. And yep, you've got it. If you've watched any of our videos, you know that I'm talking about the chick lift. The ability to be able to take the chicken tractor from all the boards being safe on the ground so that no predators can go from underneath, that's key, to be able to raise it easily with the wheels and be able to move them. You, guys, we move them all over our property, super easy. I've even moved these things with my tractor across my property whenever I need that. If you're tractoring chickens for anything, you have to buy one of these. Okay, so next up on the list is this Camp Chef uh, dual propane burner. Uh, we do have the small one that just goes on the ground. This is used to be able to heat up the pot so that you can scald the chicken before you end up throwing them in the plucker, which is gonna be talking about next. I like this because it's off the ground. You don't have to like bend over. Camp Chef dual propane burner. All right, so next up is you need some sort of good high quality knife for processing the birds. Find any kind of knife. I don't think it really matters. It actually is more important the way that you sharpen the knives. So if you have a high quality, kind of like a fillet knife, uh, then use it uh, that you like, use it. If you don't have one, then I like mine better. All right, next on the list is gonna be our yard bird chicken plucker. Best $500 we ever spent. You can do one bird at a time, but it plucks it perfectly. It is fantastic. It is the thing that takes something that looks like an animal to something that looks like what you would buy at the store. If you're doing a small scale run of birds, then this is what you need. You need this chicken plucker. This is the yardboard cone. You can make your own of these. I've, I've once done it with a milk carton and you can make these if you can you know find the steel but this guy we were in a hurry and we bought it and it has just been screwed to this tree it has lasted the weather for the last three years this thing is awesome it just lives right here and then we just put a bucket underneath this is the start of the process when processing chickens all right, next up is going to be simple, these shrink bags for your chickens. Basically, you just put the whole bird into the bag and then you put it under hot water. You use it with the Camp Chef propane burner, a pot of boiling water, and it just shrinks up the bird nice and clean. You don't get freezer burn. It doesn't pop. It is a great quality. Link down below for the shrink bags. Hey, so I hope that you're liking this video about talking about all the tools. If you do, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know what are the tools and gears that you bought in your beginning of building your homestead. I'd love to hear. Put that down in the comments below and we're going to continue with the tool list right now. All right, so our second year of 2020 wasn't only for chickens. It was also learning how to propagate trees. This is the Clonex Rooting Hormone 
you take the cutting, you dip it in this, and then you put that in the dirt, and it works. The proof is in the garden of all of the fodder trees that we have been able to propagate here in our garden. There's a lot all over the rest of the property that aren't on irrigation, but they are surviving because we did it in the fall and we were able to get those roots going early so that they survived through the next spring and summer. This is great. And these fodder trees are what we use in these hard times here in the summer of Texas, where we take these trees when we make tree hay, cows can get something green whenever it is 107 degrees out here. All right, a change of pace here in the studio, gonna go over two things. One is my Leatherman. Now, full disclosure, I, I did not buy this. An amazing buddy of mine, he actually bought this for me for my birthday. Can't believe that he did that because I've never had a Leatherman and he had one and he got me this one. This is the Leatherman Free T4. This is a better Swiss Army knife. This thing is awesome. It's got a fantastic blade. It also has uh, these two like flatheads. It has a Phillips. You guys, this Phillips, I think I've used this almost for installing all of the outlets. What I like most about this are these scissors. Man, like I just use these all the time. I love this Leatherman. Okay, next thing is gonna be right behind me. We just thought that this was cool. Actually, that same buddy of mine who got me Leatherman had this in his office and I just thought it was rad. And it is a black glass uh, dry erase board. So if you need some organization to get on the same page, you can put all your thoughts down, big goals, this is great. All right, so homesteading isn't always only about just the tools. Sometimes you gotta cook stuff. This brings us to some kitchen things. This is a meat thermometer. This is very versatile. You can put it in the oven, which we use a lot. I think I also want another one that's a direct uh, thermometer that just has the stick that you can just put it in the meat. Kelly uses it more than I do and it does the job. Okay, all of my kids are sleeping so I have to be kind of quiet. A couple of other things. This is this chain link thing for scrubbing cast iron. Fantastic for whenever you're cooking on your cast iron skillets and you don't want to use soap. This thing gets all the gunk off. It's awesome. You need one of these for your kitchen. And then we bought all of the bowls, just the same as last week with the stainless steel plates. Then we ended up getting the bowls. Okay, I do have a couple of personal like products also. This is for if you have any cuts or anything crazy. We actually have also used this for Goldie for if she has like a cut on her teats or something. This is Christopher's Complete Tissue and Bone. This is a comfrey ointment. You guys, this is phenomenal. It is amazing. Do your own research for cuts, bruises, really like so many things. This is what we turn to. We love this. We have all of our essential oils and they're fantastic. We also like this too. The second one is called Zanfeld. It is a poison ivy ointment. We have so much poison ivy here on our property. Luckily, our kids and our family are not fully allergic to poison ivy we do get it from time to time this zanfeld stuff knocks it out it's phenomenal if you have poison ivy anywhere or if you're allergic to poison ivy you need to buy this stuff okay so if you live in open pasture prairie land then you probably don't need these but if you have any kind of brush like we do everywhere you need a good quality pair of loppers you know me i love fiskers it's just a great brand and they hold up. This is actually the second pair that we've bought, not because the first one broke, but because we use these so much that we lose them. <laughs> so this pair can cut up to two inches. And I mean, you can see how wide you can get that in there. What I like about these is that they're safe for the kids to be able to use. It's really, really fantastic. They're great. Okay, so we're going completely random all over the place. But next we're talking about water hoses. I love these, I found these out from Jack Spierko at the Survival Podcast. These are the Gilmore Garden Hose. You guys, these things don't kink. These things 
are phenomenal. I have them all over my property. I've bought the cheap ones and I do have the cheap ones for other things, but whenever I need, especially whenever I need to hold water pressure in water, so for like our cows, uh, float valve, this, you, you, you gotta go with these. These are so good. Okay, sorry about the sound. I'm right here by the air conditioner in the same thought of the Gilmore garden hoses. We also have almost everything on quick connects so that I can easily just pop this off. You see that? And then right here, and just take it. It's hard to do it with one hand. But if you're moving garden hoses a whole lot, quick connects, super helpful. Okay, so if you're raising pigs, I've talked about this in my latest pig video, is having a way to automate water. This is just a 55 gallon drum filled up with water. It's got a pig nipple here. So down there is a bulkhead fitting to be able to create that non-leaking seal. And then you just put a, a pig water nipple on it. And I don't wanna really do this, but it's right there. So that I don't want to get bit by Missy. <laughs> but this is a fantastic way to be able to get water to your pigs. Alrighty, y'all, that is my list for year two of building our homestead. Let me know if you like this. And also, soon, we'll talk about all those bigger purchases in a future video when we were building our homestead.